Hello guys, Stan here from Dan's Tech. In today's video, guys, I'm going to be bringing you a comparison between an Intel Core i7, i5, i3, and also a Pentium for video editing performance. Now, in this video, I'm going to be rendering out two of my projects, you know, actual uh, real world projects have been actually uploaded to YouTube. So, two projects of all them processors, and I'm also going to be doing um, 500 megahertz overclocks on both the i7 and the i5 to see also how that performs how that really affects the performance of the i5 and the i7 and at the end just going to round everything up and kind of um, show you guys the performance on the graphs in terms of the percentage gains you get from using say an i5 or an i7 or from using an i7 and a slightly overclocked i7. So hopefully um, this video, once we kind of get into it, all the graphs near the end should be all nice and easy to digest and yeah, you can make a decision if you want to go say an i3, an i5 or an i7. I am including a Pentium in this comparison even though I really won't recommend a Pentium for video editing even though you can still export your videos with a Pentium they're not going to be very good for video editing just because they don't really have the high clock speeds or the core count that can really well chew through editing tasks very easily. So guys without further ado let's jump into it and um, yeah let's see the difference between all of these processors from Intel. So peeps, to get started, the test system we're going to be using for all the tests today is a Haswell-based system. This currently consists of an i7-4790K with a NHD15 cooler strapped to it, 16GB of DDR3 memory and an ASUS GTX 960 2GB graphic card to assist in accelerating video effects. We're going to be testing more than an i7 today, so we're going to be swapping out this CPU for a less powerful i5-4690K, i3-4170 and Pentium G3258 chips. I'll also be applying a founded megahertz overclock to both the i5 and the i7 to see how this changes video render times when running a little faster. Now I've gotten the hardware out of the way, we can talk about the tests. I'll be performing a variety of render tests and we'll be rendering a couple of different videos I've created in the past. This will generate extremely realistic workloads as these are actual projects of mine that have been exported and uploaded to YouTube in 2016. So first up we have the most recent video, a comparison of many high-end CPU colors from manufacturers like Reven and Noctua. This project mainly consists of lots of MP4 and JPEG files, nearly all the video clips have rather video stabilization applied to them, or are clips from a tripod that have been sped up. Total runtime is 8 minutes 33 seconds. As for the second project, this is part 2 of my sister's gaming PC build that acted as my gaming PC build guide for early 2016. This runs for slightly less time at 6 minutes 48 seconds and is generally a lot less render intensive with, with it not containing as many clips and many clips not being stabilised or sped up nearly as fast as in the other video. So as for the first project, the i7-4790K was able to render the video out in 43 minutes, the i5-4690K taking 59 minutes, and the i3-4170 taking 81 minutes, and finally the Pentium G3258 taking 121 minutes. As for the overclock set on the i7, this improves the render times by 5 minutes, and with the overclock on the i5, this improves render times by 9 minutes. As for the second test, the i7-4790K was able to render the video out in a mere 16 minutes, the i5-4690K taking 21 minutes, the i3-4170 taking 27 minutes, and the Pentium G3258 taking 39 minutes. As for the overclock set on the i7 and the i5 again, the i7 improves render times by 3 minutes when overclocked, and with the overclock on the i5, this improves render times by 4 minutes. Moving all this data into percentage improvements, on average moving from a Pentium to an i3 this gives 47% more performance, moving from an i3 to an i5 gives you an increase of 33%, and moving from an i5 to an i7 gives you performance increases of up to 34% on average. And lastly, as for overclocking, by applying even a modest 500 MHz overclock really does assist the overall render times. On the i7, this improves performance by 21% on average, while overclocking the i5 by the same amount improves performance by 18% on average. Without further ado, let's conclude. So guys, there we are. There are all the performance gains in the good old percentages. Now, as you've seen, um, there is quite a bit of difference between all of the processors. Going from a Pentium to an i3, that's probably the biggest chunk there, and spending that bit more money for an i3 is something you really do need for video editing. Now going from an i3 to an i5, you know, you do have a nice performance increase, and then going from the i5 to an i7 again, a nice performance increase. Now when you do overclock both an i5 or an i7, you do get really good performance increases, and I would recommend you guys overclocking by even 500 megahertz, and you can, have, and you can, and you can actually achieve this on many 
um, say, budget CPU cores as well. So I would recommend overclocking because it really does, um, you know, really does um, slice off of a few minutes on each render, which is going to save you hours, um, say if you have the processor for many years. Um, and you know you do export quite a lot of videos say for YouTube or other platforms. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed. Uh, feel free to like, comment and also subscribe. And also stay tuned for another video which I'm going to be making very similar to this one. It's going to be comparing an i7, i5, i3 and Pentium for gaming. So I'm going to be testing many games like Fallout, uh, Grand Theft Auto 5 and Killing Floor 2. There's some other games that I'm going to be including in there. So um, yeah, be on the lookout for that one. So guys, thank you very much for watching. Feel free to like, comment and also subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.